Hello everyone and thank you for joining me. My name is Katie and I'm a teaching artist with LACMA. And for this workshop, we are gonna be using items from nature and from our own household, our own kitchen, for instance, to experiment with photography and explore the world of color. Pattern. Light. And shadow. For inspiration, we're gonna take a journey out into the desert to meet an artist in his studio named William Lesh. And he's going to share with us his passion for nature and photography, and also show us his process and his experimental ways of using everyday objects and items from nature. The materials that we're gonna be using for this project are items from nature. So rocks, it can be uh, leaves, a device for taking pictures. So this could be a phone, it could be an iPad, whatever you have for taking pictures. We're also gonna be using items from our home. Um, so this might include a whisk in the kitchen that I found, a cheese grater, um, mesh bag, Notice that all of these things have kind of holes in them or interesting lines. We're going to be casting patterns through these objects onto our subject, which are going to be items from nature. So we'll explain more about that later. We're also going to be using colored paper. So this can be construction paper of different colors, and this is going to be your background. Lastly, we will need a flashlight. And we're also going to create a really dark space to work. All right, so now let's head on out. We're going to take a little road trip to the desert. I'm going to grab my sunscreen check. I've got my sunglasses really bright in the desert. Bandana, keep the sun off my neck. All right, you ready? Let's head on out to meet William Lesh, the artist who's gonna share with us his artistic process and inspire our art. I've lived now in the desert for about 40 years and have been working photographing uh, in the desert for all that time. I think that when I would go out into the desert at first, it, it would I didn't know what to think of it. And I think a lot of people, when they first come in contact with the desert, if, if they didn't grow up there, it seems like a really forbidding place. A lot of the plants, like the prickly pear, that have really long, extremely sharp needles, you don't want to run into those things. It takes a while for that to grow on you. The desert kind of sneaks up on you a real, in a real subtle way. And what I was after was something, as I lived here longer, I began to see how tenacious life was in the desert, how how much these cactus and things just could live and thrive and grow and they flower and everything with what seemed like next to no water. And you'd, you'd wonder, how can they, how are they surviving out this? They're not only surviving, they're like, you know, putting out these incredible flowers in the spring. And it, I really love the way that the shape is so simple. It's like a symbol, like a circle, a square, you know, it's a heart. It's like this really symbolic shape that in a way 
could represent the desert. I believe real strongly in the idea of art being about a region, a, a place on earth. I'm trying to create an art that is about this specific place and the symbols and the, the light, uh, everything about it. So when, I, when I'm making these, um, what I'll do, you know, basically I start with a surface and it, you know, in this case it, it was the tile. What I use for the prickly pear pads is a lot of stuff from the kitchen. This is just, you know, a grabber for the grill. They work great for picking up prickly pears. A lot of times what I like to do, especially with things like leaves or flowers or anything like that, I'll put something underneath so instead of it sitting right on the background, it's raised up a little bit. I have the camera positioned over it on a tripod. And then what I do, I just use a flashlight. And then I would shine the light through these colored filters and then also move it at the same time, basically painting with light. Welcome back. That was amazing. Now that we're back in our studio, let's uh, let's go out in our own neighborhood and see what kind of nature we can find. Look for some leaves, some rocks, some branches, really anything that you find around your home from nature and want to use for your art. Now I live in the city, but like the artist William Lesh said, sometimes nature just might sneak up on you. All right, so let's go ahead and begin. So I have all of my materials laid out here. I've got my items from nature. I've got my flashlight my um, different color paper for my background and I'm actually holding my my device which is going to be my phone that I'll be using to take pictures and you'll see I also have these objects that I collected from my home now you can see right now I have a whisk I have a braider I have a mesh bag and you can use objects like these, but you can also use whatever you want. Some other ideas um, would be using wire or you know, even yarn to make kind of interesting shapes to cast shadows onto your items from nature. I'm gonna show you that right now, but first, let's turn off the lights and make it dark. Now, I'm gonna grab my flashlight and I'm just gonna show you what happens when I shine the flashlight through these objects. Can you guess what these objects are? I know I've told you what some of them are. What do you think this is? And now that you've gotten a sense of the shadows, now you can grab your first color background to use. I'm gonna start with this red color. And see if you can cast shadows and shine it down on the object and then just constantly be moving around the flashlight to get some interesting shadows. And we're just gonna keep doing this, trying different objects, trying different paper colors to use and just have fun with it and, and make sure to take as many pictures as you can. You might actually have somebody help you hold the flashlight uh, while you take the pictures and that way, you know, you can kind of move more freely.
hope you had a great time and took some really amazing pictures and uh, maybe take some time to look at your photographs and think about what they look like to you, what they feel like to you. Have you seen anything like these before? Because maybe you created something completely unique and maybe they look sort of otherworldly to you. What would you title these photographs? What if you put them all together into a series? Ask your friends and family what they see from them. Thank you so much for joining me and we will see you next time.